Good morning and welcome once more as we come together in this virtual way to worship on this, the Lord's Day. You're all welcome, regardless of where you are, who you're with, just you're very welcome to come and join us on this service from Southleith Parish Church. I'm the Reverend Ian May, the Minister of Southleith, and again welcome you all to the service. Today our flowers, which are just behind me, have been um, donated by the Tullock family, by Maurice Tullock, who, and they're dedicated to his wife Janet, who died very recently and very unexpectedly, and the funeral was last Thursday, and thank you very much, Maurice, for donating these flowers as a very loving tribute to someone we all love for, loved and cared for so much. Next Sunday, we would normally be having the Leith Festival Sunday, uh, but as you all know, because of the current uh, situation, the Leith Festival is not going on. And But we've decided that the, the churches in Leith will get together next Sunday and we will still live stream the service from this website. But uh, there will be a number of people from the other churches in Leith who will be sharing in worship with us. That's next Sunday at 11 o'clock and I hope you can join us then. So let us worship God, who is one and three. Let us come as one in love, in grace, in fellowship. Let us join with all this morning. Let us join in unity, in peace, in love. Let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And let us do so by sharing in the first hymn. It's hymn number 132, Immortal, Invisible, God only wise. I'm now going to ask Jesse, Jesse Benebo, who is a candidate for ministry in our home country of Nigeria, but is also part of our congregation, as she is currently studying for a PhD at New College University of Edinburgh. So Jesse is going to bring us the gathering prayer and Lord's Prayer. Jesse. Our prayers of adoration, confession and supplication. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose love is beyond comprehension, whose wisdom is immeasurable, who is limitless in power, duration, and location, yet 
who has demonstrated your love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You remain God in spite of human wickedness. You remain God in spite of the destructions in our world. You transcend COVID-19 and the many challenges that we face daily. You rule by your own power and wisdom. You hold up your world and you remind us in more ways that we can number that you alone are God over all creation. May your most holy name be praised and adored in all places now and forevermore. The greatness of your majesty, we're sorry to confess, has not changed us sufficiently. We still sin, O oh God. We are not respectful of our neighbors. We are unmindful of their good, often seeking ours only. We have failed to accept and love one another. Instead, we have built walls that separate and cause loss of lives and sorrow to families. We sin against your beautiful creation in many ways. We make choices that deplete species of your creation and infringe on the boundaries of the wild. In addition to this, Lord, we have not kept pure hearts or pure thoughts or even valued holy things. Please look upon us in pity, O God, and have mercy upon us. Forgive our sins and evils, we plead in Jesus' name. Give us grace to love you above all else. Defend us in every danger and temptation and evil. Give us courage by your blessed Holy Spirit to stand for what is right, to welcome all persons made in your image, to admit our limits and honor your creation. On this Trinity Sunday, teach us through your word, songs, and the prayers with which we will worship you, to draw closer to you. Help us to learn keenly from your spirit, to follow strictly the example of Christ Jesus, and to live in our world to serve and glorify your most holy name. Through Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Jesse, for sharing that prayer with us. And studies are going well, and you're coming to an important time in your studies. Now, um, Gavin Booth, who is one of our elders, is going to share with us his first thoughts as um, he's thinking about what this current situation means to him and to others. Gavin. Good morning. As you can see, I'm taking advantage of the good weather while it lasts. And that's been one of the pluses in these difficult and uncertain times when we're all worried and anxious. For nearly three months now, we've not been able to do so many things, like visiting our friends and relatives and hugging and kissing them, like going out to restaurants, like traveling on buses and trams. And if you know me, you'll know how difficult that has been and not being able to go to South Leith Church on a Sunday morning. There is something comforting and reassuring about sitting in church, perhaps at a distance now, feeling part of the church community. And I've missed helping to lead worship with my friends in the music group. But there have been positives too. Technology allows us to join with hundreds of others for the weekly Sunday services that Ian conducts from the manse just like this one. And although we've missed celebrating the joy of Easter together and joining with others in the April Communion, these streamed Sunday services are an important part of our week, reminding us that God's presence is around us at all times, particularly in these difficult times. There are other positives too, of course. Lockdown has meant that we're spending more time at home 
perhaps taking the time to do some spring cleaning and other jobs around the house. Me, I've uh, discovered what many of the kitchen utensils are for, and I must say, I've never washed my hands so much. We're lucky to have a back garden up here at Meadowbank, and we can see Leith even if we haven't been able to visit. Although we've lived here for nearly 50 years, I don't think Jennifer and I have ever spent so much time in our garden. We've been enjoying the weather, obviously, enjoying the quietness, hearing the bird song, watching the garden blossoming from spring into summer. Now I'm a, I'm a city boy, not used to spending much time communing with nature, but I am learning how to identify the flowers, the trees and the birds. That's, um, that's a, a flower over there, and I'm pretty sure that that's a tree over there, and yes, yes, these are birds. As you can gather, I've still got a long way to go on this. In our daily permitted exercise, Jennifer and I are discovering nearby places that we've never noticed in our 50 years here. Pathways in Holyrood Park, a community garden in Duddingston, and we've spoken to neighbours more than our normally busy lives have permitted. Many people believe, as I do, that this strange episode in our lives will bring positive outcomes. Before lockdown, many things in our world seem to be careering out of control, and I'm sure that we will all emerge into a different world, hopefully a gentler, more caring world, when we shall all have more time for each other more time to do all these little jobs we've not got round to, and more time to count our blessings, and um, to get a haircut. We look forward to returning to the new normal that people are talking about, and to gathering, perhaps at a distance, on a Sunday morning in church to worship together with the church community. And at this time of Pentecost, we are remembering how the Holy Spirit descended on the Apostles and celebrate the birth of the Church. And in the same spirit, we look forward to a time of renewal for us all, a fresh start. Thank you, Gavin, for those words. We're now going to ask Gavin's wife, the Reverend Jennifer Booth, to share with us in our Bible readings this week. The first is from the Psalm, Psalm 8. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians, Paul's letter to the early church in Corinth. Jennifer. Our Old Testament reading today is taken from the book of Psalms, attributed to David, Psalm 8, is entitled Divine Majesty and Human Dignity. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our New Testament reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, beginning at verse 11. Final greetings and benediction. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. 
listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jennifer, for, for sharing those readings with us. Now in our slot for Music of Reflection, I'm going to play a video. This video we played in the church maybe a year or two ago. And because this is Trinity Sunday, this is a, a group of dancers who are interpreting commentary what the Holy Trinity, the in one, is in their way about. So let us see this music for reflection for Trinity Sunday. Father and Son and the Spirit, three persons, one God. In the Trinity exists the very nature of unity. They continually love and glorify one another. God is fulfilled and complete, lacking nothing, no beginning and no end. sake of those who rejected him. So he said, let it be so. Interesting interpretation for this Trinity Sunday. This week I'm sure we have all seen the most disturbing images from the United States regarding the killing of George Floyd by a police officer in Minneapolis and the subsequent demonstrations. This widely shown video shows a police officer calmly kneeling on George Floyd's neck, seemingly 8 minutes 46 seconds. Bystanders plead with the officer to get off Mr. Floyd and let him breathe. By the time the para paramedics arrive, 
Mr. Floyd was non-responsive. The death of George Floyd has spurred many reactions. Most of them, I'm thank to say, peaceful and good. Unfortunately, there's also been some violence, some looting and some fires. I'm sure I've seen them all in the various videos and news reports. And underneath it, people are angry. They want justice. Some even want revenge. Very emotional scenes from all sides have been shared. Protests have spread across the states and they're still going on as they have in our own country yesterday and today. Peaceful marches, I'm glad to say, were the majority of the events that took place. With all marching and crying, the same thing to remember a great injustice done to someone who did not deserve to die. And he died, as I suppose, with these marches are saying, because for some, black lives don't matter where they do matter, I can assure you. It's in a very divided, polarised, and unfortunately, a society, a country where racism prevails in too many places, not just in America, but other places as well. It made me think a lot this week about my sermon and especially for this on Trinity Sunday and the three in one. And often when I'm thinking about my weekly sermon and I read the passage that we heard Jennifer read from Corinthians, which is the passage for this week, Sometimes a verse or a few words jump out at me and focus me on what I need to think about and what I need to share. This week was no exception. As I said, this is Trinity Sunday when after the celebration last week of Pentecost, we reflect upon the Holy Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The Trinity of love, grace, fellowship. In those verses we heard Jennifer share, it was the words from verse 12 that really struck me this week. Words that for me certainly I feel and for many others are so needed in this time. This time of division, of anger, of where folk just need to come together. That verse 12 says, Greet one another with a holy kiss. Greet one another with a holy kiss. If this is not an inspiration at this time, I do not know what is. All need to greet each other now with a holy kiss. People across races, across communities, across nations still need to do that this day. And I suppose when I was reflecting upon, I was thinking about it myself in these times of lockdown. I too need to greet you all. I know I'm doing it this morning through a virtual way, but also with a holy kiss. When we share the peace at communion, many of us do greet each other with the holy kiss. And in some ways, that is such a sign of unity at that special time. We've not been able to do that in a physical sense for some time. It's so important being able to see each other, feel each other in a good way around us, understand, speak, share with each other, and to greet each other as one family. The Holy Kiss for me is a reminder to us all that we are part of one holy, united family. And just as we greet our loved ones, our family members, when they visit our homes, so we as a church, as the people of God, need to do the same. Especially when things are a bit fractured and we feel a wee bit distant. When people seem at odds with each other, that sharing of the holy kiss can make such a difference. And I do wish, I really do, the President of the United States, instead of using the Bible as a photo call outside a church, had instead, when he was seemingly hauled down into a bunker under the White House, he would open that Bible 
and read what was in, in it. And especially from 2 Corinthians, when it talks about sharing a holy kiss. And then when he emerged from his short lockdown, which he just said he was you know, surveying or something, he then used the words there, words of healing, words of unification, words that can be used to ease the division, ease the anger, ease the pain that so many in his country and elsewhere are suffering at this time. That's not how it worked, was it? Stood there with a Bible. What does that say to us? The symbol, the holy kiss. The symbol that can be used to ensure and reassure us and retell us that we are all one under God. Regardless of our skin colour, our race, our creed. We are all made likeness of God. The holy kiss is a kiss of Trinity. The Trinity of love, of grace and fellowship. And it can bring about so much healing. Paul, as we heard in his second letter to that new Christian community in the Greek city of Corinth, knew then that there was people within that community, within the Christian community, that were at odds with each other. There were internal disputes, disagreements that were pulling them apart. Yet in this second letter, in these final words, he doesn't scold them. Instead, he uses his words to encourage them, assure them that they can be as one with each other, that through love, grace and fellowship, he talks of they can be at one with themselves and more importantly, be at one with God as a people in that place, in that time. And the love that Paul talks about is the love of God. Paul wants them to see that to be in the presence of God, one only needs to show love. God is fully present to any act that is done in love which was a relatively new idea for the people of that time who had previously worshipped gods who were to be feared, to be given offerings, to make sacrifices to, to fend off their wrath. Paul talks of a God of unconditional love. He wants us all to share the love he talks of. A love that's not a superficial love or like we may have an acquaintance or a love between a husband and wife or between parent and children, but a perfect love we can only aspire to. A love that is given freely, unconditionally, and a love we are asked to share with others unconditionally through the holy kiss. Paul also talks of grace, freely given by Jesus. The Corinthians, as I'm sure we're all today, quite happy to welcome such grace into our own lives because through grace all is forgiven. Yet Paul wants them to see grace as something that works for us, in us and through us. It works inside us so we can mend any brokenness that causes us to act in an unloving way to others. Grace, if you like, is the catalyst of change or transformation that allows us to set ourselves a new course. Grace should, do, should come from our hearts to others as a never-ending flow. As the ancient theologian St. Augustine said, the pursuit of perfect grace will never let grace sit still. It is received, it moves within, it is given freely to others. This is the work of grace, the love of God. Love, grace, fellowship, trinity is brought together through the, if you like, the work of the Holy Spirit, through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit works to connect it all together. It connects the love, the grace, the fellowship, the Trinity we speak of. 
The Spirit connects all humanity to one another, cuts through all things that we as often, as often as humans often use to divide us. Spirit works to include rather than exclude. Encourage us to, encourages us to seek out those who are not like us rather than just stick with those who agree with us. The Spirit helps us break down barriers. It encourages us to go out and be beside, walk beside, embrace those who we may feel and see as different and don't want to be associated with. The Spirit allows us to use our weaknesses to support others, to strengthen our relationships, to encourage, to love, to share and truly see that there is more that connects us than divides us. To use any differences to build upon them, to build the love, the grace, the fellowship, the peace, the unity our world so needs today. But you may well ask, wow, if it was just as easy as that. But in many ways, it is as easy as that. We as individuals, as communities, as nations can do it if the willingness and the effort is there. And we have to thank God that we don't have to do it alone. If only more of our world leaders would open their Bibles rather than hold them up as if some self-seeking publicity, you know, photo shoot. Open up and see that the love, the grace, the fellowship brought together by the holy kiss is a starting point to heal the divisions, ease the pain. And my hope and prayer for this world and for all today is that those who are angry, who seek revenge, will not use violence or keep hate in their hearts. Instead, give others the holy kiss. All they feel, they feel are against them. Then use that as a starting point, as a new course, as a pathway to seek the path of justice in a loving and grace-filled way. But through loving, grace-filled fellowship with each other, we can all be then the people of God that God wants us all to be. I'll end now in the, with the final words that Paul shared with the good folk of Corinth 2,000 years ago. Words that if we all followed, it would, really would, restart a time of peace and unity as the Holy Trinity proclaims. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Now I'd like to share with you a prayer for others. Let us pray. Gracious God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we now bring to you our prayers for others. Lord, in these challenging, difficult times, it's good to know we have your loving presence around us guiding us, supporting us, caring for us as we try to understand and to come to terms that things have changed, that our lives will not return to normal for some time. Yet in all this uncertainty, it's good news that through the grace of your Son and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we can be assured that no matter what comes before us, we can turn to you to ask for help, Seek your comfort, knowing that you will listen to all our pleas. So this day we bring before you our prayers for all this day who are working to help others with the COVID-19 pandemic. We think of doctors and nurses, of care staff, of the cleaners, the kitchen staff providing meals, the porters taking people here, there and everywhere. We pray for those in power. We pray that they will 
guide themselves and us to ensure we are given sound and truthful advice, but that they are cautious and sensible in all they say and they do. We think of delivery drivers taking food and goods to those locked up, shielding in their homes. We pray for those who are perhaps locked in a small flat with a wee one who doesn't understand what's going on and can't seem to want to go out or wants to go out all the time but can't. And the frustrations that all causes. And we give thanks for us who have gardens so we can meet our loved ones, so we can walk out, enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the blue skies. So Lord, in these dark times, we know there is hope. Restrictions are being eased. We can play or watch our favourite sport. We can spend more time out and about. We can start to return to some form of normality. And Lord, in all this, we ask that you guide us, support us, comfort us, especially if we feel a bit anxious or fearful about the easing of the restrictions. The loving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we may now bring to you all who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Reach out to them in their shock, their grief, their sorrow, and grant them the comfort you promise and the assurance that death is not the end, but the gateway to a new life, a new beginning in your loving, embracing hands. And may the truth your Son shared with us support them as they struggle to come to terms with their loss. Help them to ease the sense of emptiness, the separation can so easily overwhelm. Loving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we now pray for ourselves. Help us to recognise our strengths and weaknesses. To accept there are things we can do and things beyond us. To give thanks to, for what we are and for all the gifts and talents you have bestowed within us. To give thanks for the contribution of others who are doing their best to make these times easier for all. Loving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, hear our prayers. Amen. So just to remind you that next week we are having a bit of a joint service with other um, contributions from the churches in Leith as we come together when we would normally be the Leith Festival service but this year we're just having a joint service to think about our community here in Leith and what it means to us when we can't all go out to the links and enjoy the festivities and the parade and all the other associated events that the Leith Festival brings each year. Our closing hymn this morning is Hymn 110, Glory Be to God the Father.
So as we leave this place, as we go from here, this we will do. We will put things in order. We will listen to the appeal of truth. We will agree with one another. Keep the unity and peace. Father speaks of. We will be faithful to God. The God of love. The God of peace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and evermore. Amen.